I find it very interesting. You'll speak to a lot of um, Bitcoin maxis and most of them will just stay there. What make you? What made you venture outwards and, and look beyond Bitcoin? Yeah, I think I realized very quickly that Bitcoin's goal was just to stay there as a store of value. And it was not ever going to be anything more than that. And for most people, that's okay. For me, great. But I wanted, I, I saw the technology or the ideas behind the technology had a lot greater ramification than just store value. I believe Bitcoin's always going to be slow. And that's a feature, not a bug, by the way. It's going to stay the way it is. It's not going to innovate. It's just going to stay the way it is. Fine. But there is a new opportunity to actually coordinate the world's assets. As everything is going very, very digital, there needs to be this coordination layer that allows you to really coordinate users' intentions around what they want to do with the assets in a very atomic um, and a very scalable way. Nobody was building that. Um, I saw an opportunity to do that at Facebook, uh, jumped at that with both hands, had a lot of fun. We didn't get to launch, unfortunately, uh, for various reasons. But now with Miston, we can realize that dream and do that at a much accelerated pace than was ever possible. One of the things I'm most proud about that we invented recently was something called ZK Login and also sponsor transactions. ZK Login allows you to use your existing Facebook account, Google account, any OAuth-based Web2 account that you have to create a wallet and start transacting without worrying about gas because sponsor transactions will cover the gas on your behalf. So you can build compelling Web2 experiences using SWE without introducing people to the concept of wallets, which I think are the dumbest thing ever created. Mm -hmm. Wallets should not exist. And that's our view. Like, quite frankly, you should be able to onboard using your existing Web2 account, start transacting with crypto, without ever having to worry about wallets and all the complexities of, of the infrastructure. Divorcing the infrastructure from the consumer is really going to be the barrier, right, that we have to solve. And we've solved that in an immensely great way at Mr. Labs. And, and SWE ecosystem is starting to grow. We have, uh, we've seen the amount of growth on Web2 accounts on the SWE ecosystem significantly. And I think our, our view by 2030, majority of games will have a form of ownership and it will be powered by SWE. So we all onboard 3.3 billion gamers onto the platform. Solana kind of, you know, came to fruition and came to the market, you know, three or four years ago already. And they were the big newcomers. I, I think a lot of people consider SWE to be that right now, you know, in, in the last year at least. Um, how difficult is it just to attract developers, one, and then users, two? Because, you know, a lot of people just ask, why do we need another blockchain? Yeah. From our perspective, I think SWE has been around for a year and three to four months. Wordy number two behind Solana and non-EVM, and that's growing really, really fast. Um, our view is not to think of ourselves as a competitor to Solana or other layer ones or whatever. Our view is much broader. Um, quite frankly, SWE was designed from day one without any limitation on scale, the ability to scale horizontally. We're going after a bigger market, L literally the coordination layer for the internet. So a world where everyone owns assets that are digital, you need a layer to coordinate people's ac um, actions. But to do that at a world where, you know, it's very frictionless for the user to do so, um, that for us is a multi, multi-trillion opportunity rather than a layer one, which is a couple of billion dollar opportunity, which I think is actually quite of value right now. Um, for us, we are going to keep building and everything we do, we recently announced Walrus, which is another um, venture into that. Really now the internet, once you've got coordination, you need a, a layer to store the world's um, assets as well. Beyond just coordinating the world's assets, you need to be able to store websites, images, and really define ownership around data as well. So as you see, we're building the layer of what the internet of the future is gonna be. The future of the internet is gonna be one where people own the pro protocols by which they interact with, right? I own a piece of the internet, right? I can't own TCP IP. I can't own Google and use Google, right? I, I own a piece of the internet, and for me to extract value from the internet, I give back to the community and extract value in that sense. That is a very democratic view of the future, and that's one we're very, very excited about. And I think it's going to create a new form of um, new form of economic models and opportunities for open source software that's never been possible before. I'm very, very excited about the opportunities there. What do you think of all the distractions then this year? You know, celebrity meme coins on Solana and, and other chains, you know, Ethereum. Uh, they've all got them. Uh, there's a lot of degeneracy. I mean, that's my own opinion. Yeah. What do you think about everything that's going on? And is it a distraction or, or does it draw people in and potentially drive some adoption? So I, I think the worst use case to onboard um, the mass market to is is that kind of activity, quite frankly, right? Like it's, if people come in and the first thing you can do is is buy something weird and funny and it doesn't really have much value, I, I think we're doing a disservice. Our focus has always been on building real enterprise value for people in the ecosystem. We announced a partnership with USDC recently with Circle who are going to allow stablecoins on SWE, which 
I think now you have an account on SWE that allows you to just use your Google account to sign in. Now you can send money with just like email. So there's no need to have a wallet, no onboarding, no complex mechanisms. Our goal is to drive the 3.3 billion gamers into SWE and anybody that wants to do any form of commerce into SWE. So we're focused on real impactful use cases at the scale of the world rather than the minute world of Web3 that exists today. Now, I'm not against everything that happens in Web3. I think they have their place. And I also think you do need to have some element of experimentation in the Web3 space to figure out the real use cases. Mm -hmm. I just think let's be careful not to make that the defining product of the space. We don't have gas fees that spike through the roof. You don't have filling transactions that are required to try again and again. Mm -hmm. You don't have outages that go on for you know random times where you, know, you actually need to trade. Um, you, you don't have a max throughput. The network, you throw more hardware capacity to the network and it scales horizontally. The stuff you expect from infrastructure, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, which you don't get from Web3 as a whole. I think we're bringing that level of execution to Web3 and I think it's, it's about time. Obviously some networks have, have struggled at times, especially when they do just get a huge amount of users and a huge amount of uh, transactions and uh, you know, volume. When do you become battle tested? When does that happen for SWE and like, I mean, so, you, you say yeah. now it hasn't happened, but yeah. it could happen, right? Where you just get a, a huge influx of users and it's going to test your system and that's, that's good when you question. Really know. Well, certainly the, the, the amount of users in Web3 today is so low that the outages that are happening now are pitiful. Like it should not be happening. There aren't enough users in Web3 to take SWE down, right? So the amount of scale that, you know, leading L1s propose to have is just not there. It's, it's, we've found that, you know, you might say you're having 100 million transactions hitting the network, but realistically, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's, 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 the numbers are way, way smaller. We benchmark SWE in the limited, in, in the mainnet configuration, which is our smallest configuration, to 293, 297,000 transfers per second. That is more than Visa, Amex, MasterCard combined. So we have ample um, block space to take on existing payments rails. And if that's not enough, validators can double capacity, triple capacity. We've proven that you add seven times the capacity, you use seven exo throughput, and you increase the latency by zero. So there's no increase in latency. That's how scale works. So we have no worries about being able to take on the world's demands, but I think the other networks do, which is why they have to quote a TPS, or they have to quote the, um, these numbers to show that they've got some element of, uh, of ability to deal with the demand. But we've seen when the, when any kind of reasonable um, transactions, um, the amount, any kind of volume, uh, meaningful volume comes onto the network, the networks will usually go down. I mean, SWE has never gone down. We never had any outage. And I hope that stays like that forever. But infrastructure is very hard to run and operate. And I'm not using that as a chance to bash other networks. It's hard to run distributed systems. Yes. But our hope is we keep on having the excellence in execution engineering that we built up in working some of the largest uh, institutions in the world. Just in terms of bringing Web2 or you know, the wider world into SWE or into the blockchain um, ecosystem, do you see stable coins playing a very important part in this? Now you guys have announced this partnership with USDC. Will you be open to other stable coins? And, and is that the, yeah. the impetus for, for bringing the rest of the financial system? Yeah, I think uh, the, uh, having a variety of stable coins is gonna be critical. Having uh, as many stable coins as possible is actually only giving consumers more choice in you know, which stable coins they want to use for certain kind of use cases. So I think they're gonna be the underpinning pieces that are gonna allow you to drive real consumer use cases. Paying for milk or paying for produce in something stable is a way to go. And also stable coins perhaps give people in other countries who have unstable um, currencies access to stable currency as a way to hedge um, the economic uncertainties that they deal with. So I think they're very, very, going to be very important. What's the vision for SWE in the future? I mean, would I be able to like log into my Facebook account or something like that and use it to tap and pay for everyday goods? Absolutely. I think you'd be able to do that before the end of the year. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, we have Stash. You can go to getstash.com. Yes. You can log in with your, you can sign in with your Google account and you already have the ability to have a wallet and you choose a username so you don't have to worry about addresses. So your name can be Matt at Stashed and people can send you money instantly. Okay. Um, we're going to be impl um, implementing on and off ramps into it directly. Mm -hmm. And also USDC is going to be on it. So now you have a way to email money to anybody you want. They can receive that money and start to, uh, and go on and off ramp with it immediately rather than having to worry about wallets and downloads. That's our vision and that's very unique to SWE. Our goal is mass adoption and with them, you go where the consumers are and don't tell them to come into the Web3 world. When you look at 
bringing this many people in uh, across the world, obviously regulators are going to start looking at things like this. If I can just log into a, a blockchain-based system with a Web2 you know, a, a Web, Web profile, does proof of personhood matter? And how will you navigate the complexities of financial rules and the ability to transact without maybe not having the right licenses and that kind yeah, of Yeah, I've always maintained that blockchains are the best content distribution networks for money. It's DRM for money. Yeah. And then you add, you hack onto that the fact that it's a great irrefutable record of what has happened, um, unlike cash that is really untraceable, yeah. <laughs> right? So I, I think it's, it, it augments the experience, um, the ability to actually deal with compliance rather than the opposite, which has been what's been sold. Our view on SWE is you actually have the ability to build in interesting compliance mechanisms for your tokens. If you want, you can have closed loop tokens. If you don't want your tokens to go out of a certain circulation, you can have trading pools that are KYC'd. So if you don't have a at jpmorgan.com account, you cannot trade in a particular trading pool versus others. So you can build in public verifiable compliance rules on chain for certain assets and have some completely permissionless and free. So look forward to what people build on SWE. I think that's an interesting world, but I think having a public ledger that can enforce these rules in a very transparent and verifiable way is way better than the obtuse and um, hidden way that we have it today, quite frankly.